Okay, I want to tie up some loose ends as it relates to the videos that I did on the so-called Great American Eclipse. But first, I want to highlight this article about Ryan Garcia. Specifically, the headline states here, Ryan Garcia reveals his crazy behavior was a publicity stunt planned months in advance. Now, I'm not really interested in the details here. Those of you who followed the news will remember what he was saying and how that related to conspiracy theories and that whole thing on the Internet. All of the usual suspects were talking about Ryan Garcia and promoting him. What I want to focus on instead is the fact that this was planned months in advance and then executed in a way that the overwhelming majority of people viewing it could not see it for what it really was. They thought this guy was really losing his mind, depending on their perspective, or they thought this guy was being brave and coming out with the real truth. Hey, this is part of the disclosure that's bound to happen. The truth is winning, right? That kind of thing. The Alex Jones narrative. All of that is beside the point. The key here is that Ryan Garcia is admitting to you that he planned this months in advance and none of you could tell the difference, which is very important as it relates to controlled opposition. This is what they all do. They plan their persona for many months before they actually come on the scene with the story that they're going to go with. And then all of the usual suspects, all of the media outlets that cover these types of things, promote it. They blitz all social media platforms and make it go viral so that everybody is talking about it. And so it serves the agenda that it is designed to serve. Now, Ryan Garcia is contextualizing this in the context of, hey, I came up with this on my own. Do I believe that? No, of course I don't believe that. Personally, if I was betting on this situation, I would bet on the outcome where he is a part of the system as a famous athlete, given certain privileges because of that position that he has, and this was them coming to him and saying, hey, this is what you have to do. This is the price of your fame. We want you to say these things and pretend to be this character that's exposing these things. But it is possible that he just concocted this, in theory, as a part of some fight strategy. Though, of course, that's a perfect and plausible alibi that you would go with <laughs> to explain it away so that no one would pay attention to it anymore. Oh, hey, I just came up with that as a part of my fight promotion. Oh, yeah, people do crazy things to promote fights, and they try to get in their opponent's head, and that's what he was doing. There was no ulterior motives behind the scenes. There was nothing else going on there. This was all Ryan Garcia. But this is a pretty huge admission along those lines. This is what they do. This is how it is coordinated. It's strategized behind the scenes for months, and then the character comes out. Every new YouTuber that comes on the scene along these lines has a similar backstory that they have memorized. They know the character that they are playing, which is why so many of these uh, characters have affiliations with music and acting and movies and just entertainment in general because they have training becoming something else and performing on stage for other people. And that's why someone like an athlete or a boxer in this case, or a musician is kind of perfect to be the person that you promote because they have experience being in front of crowds and they won't crack under the pressure of the public scrutiny that will come from them going viral with these things, especially when it's the stuff that Ryan Garcia was talking about, which comes with a certain stigma and a large portion of the population will call him crazy for what he's saying. So really important admission here to keep in mind when people are discussing controlled opposition. This is how it actually works. And this is proof that it's so easy to do, right? Even if you want to be very simplistic about it and assume no other 
entities were behind this and it was all Ryan Garcia. Look how easy it was for him to do this. That's how easy it is for them when it comes to actual controlled opposition that's been on the scene for years and years. I don't need to name them all. You know who they are. So now that that is out of the way, let's get to tying up those loose ends. First of all, just recently there was a story that came out regarding Donald Trump's campaign where Donald Trump became the first American president to accept Bitcoin lightning payments for campaign donations. And the quote I have here is from a Yahoo News article on the subject, which says, This initiative may normalize the utilization of cryptocurrencies in mainstream politics and signal a shift toward the wider acceptance of digital assets. Again, what a coincidence that Donald Trump, one of their own, would do something that would further the digital currency agenda. That's just the surface level, though. What I was more interested in was the headline from Bitcoin Magazine, which focused on the fact that it was the Bitcoin Lightning payments that would be used for campaign donations. Those of you who have watched all the videos on Donald Trump and know everything that surrounds him in this way will understand the weight of including Lightning in this headline as it relates to a currency exchange. And the currency exchange part is evoking the scene where Donald Trump first announced his run for president officially in 2015. And this elevator scene was recreated in The Simpsons before it happened. But the most important part here is right before he walks down the escalator, he crosses the currency exchange sign in his building, which as I went into in prior videos is getting at what Donald Trump is symbolically, what his metaphorical role in the larger agenda is as the twin of 9-11. He's the currency exchange taking one thing and transmuting it into something else via his influence. And then, of course, as I went into in that other video, he goes down the escalator and the tower falls. <laughs> his Trump World Tower monolith falls, again evoking him as the twin of 9-11 or the towers that fall down. And then, of course, Donald Trump is Biff Tannen in the Back to the Future trilogy, and we all know the role of the lightning flash in that plot where the lightning bolt has to hit the clock tower in order to send the DeLorean back through time. And right before the April 8th, 2024 eclipse, three days before, in fact, there is a 4.8 earthquake in New Jersey right next to his New Jersey golf course that used to be owned by the guy who created the DeLorean, which is the time travel device used in Back to the Future. And right before that earthquake, there is a lightning bolt that strikes the Statue of Liberty. So now there is a more literal angle to the currency exchange metaphor where Donald Trump becomes the first president to accept Bitcoin lightning payments. It's a literal currency exchange. The exchange from cash and physical currency to digital currency, which is mirroring the quantum leap that this character is embodying in terms of the subconscious programming where Consciousness is being sent from one point to another. It's being transmuted from one thing into a different thing. An evolution, jumping through a portal into a stargate that takes you from one place to another, implying a great leap. 
in evolution. 2001, A Space Odyssey, going back to 9-11, A Star Child is Born. No coincidence that Donald Trump is the first president to accept Bitcoin lightning payments for campaign donations. And this is especially important when you understand the majority of the people who support President Trump. They are mostly older generations who kind of intuitively don't trust cryptocurrency or digital currency in general and wouldn't really know how to use it. And in this way, they are being brought on board with the digital currency revolution. This is a way to get them involved. If prior to this, they were staying away from it because President Trump himself said it was a scam years ago. This is him flip-flopping on that position and now saying that he's going to use it for himself. Now it's good. And in that way, he can convince the people who still think he is legitimate to get into this space and adopt it in whatever way they adopt it. But we'll get back to Trump later on here. I wanted to get back to 17 again in Matthew Perry because of something else that I came across, which related to the fact that when I Google 17 again release date, the date that pops up is April 14th, 2009, or 414. This is the date that pops up right under the search bar. And when I saw that for the first time, I didn't think anything of it. Nothing stuck out. However, according to the Wikipedia page for 17 again, the movie was actually released in the USA on April 17th, 2009, or 417. This is due to the fact that the premiere of the film was in California on April 14th, but the nationwide release was three days later on April 17th, 2009. It's a bit arbitrary which date you choose as the premiere, but I think it makes more sense to choose the nationwide release of this movie on April 17th. And as I went into in those Matthew Perry videos, he was pronounced dead at 4.17 p.m. Think about that. His movie 17 Again, released in 2009, came out on the date 417. And then all those years later, 14 years later, he dies at 417 p.m. What are the odds of that? At least that was when he was pronounced dead, right? I don't know if that's actually when he died, but... The Matthew Perry movie with a plot surrounding consciousness time travel was released on 4.17 or the exact time of 4.17 p.m. when Perry would later die on October 28th, which is featured in a scene in the movie where a clock reads 10.28. Let me say that again. There is an actual scene in the movie with 10.28 as the time on his car radio and the movie was released on 417, where subsequently Matthew Perry dies on 1028 at 417 p.m. Okay, I don't know how to explain this to you. That's just what it is. I'm just reporting the facts here. Like I said in that video, this is evidence that there is a ritual at work here, but as far as the actual nuts and bolts of how it is functioning and who knows what, that's beyond my pay grade. I can't explain that to you. At least I can't do that in any sort of logical way that would make sense to the rational mind that is confined to the third dimension that is our experience on planet Earth, <laughs> okay? Perry's character in Seventeen Again falls off a bridge into a whirlpool slash water where he would allegedly die, a hot tub, right after the 1028 scene before he travels through time. So note the connection here to a bridge as it relates to this ritual. The reason Perry's character gets out of his car is to stop the school janitor from jumping off of the bridge in what appears to be a suicide attempt. In that prior scene that I was talking about with the 1028, the radio is set to 92.5. 
This is important because on September 25th, 2000, or 925, Kevin Hines allegedly attempts to commit suicide by jumping off of the Golden Gate Bridge. Kevin Hines is one of only 36 people in history to allegedly survive the fall into the water. So hopefully you see that connection there. Perry's character in 17 again sees someone standing on the ledge of a bridge and thinks he's about to jump off of it. So the bridge is evoking the Golden Gate Bridge and the suicide attempt that happened on 925, which is the 92.5 that the radio is set to, where the time is 1028. According to Kevin's website, <laughs> this is crazy, many factors contributed to his miraculous survival, including a sea lion, which kept him afloat until the Coast Guard arrived. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to believe that he was actually laying on top of an actual sea lion in the water <laughs> before he was rescued, or what this actually implies. I mean, that is what you think when you read that sentence, but maybe it means something else, like he was looking at a sea lion and it kept him mentally afloat. I don't know, but suffice it to say that if we just take it at face value here, he says he was on a sea lion in the water after he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. This, of course, is incredible because the mer lion or sea lion is the official mascot of Singapore, and the dolly was flying a Singapore flag when it crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And I have the Francis Scott in bold here, at least everything but the T's, because you can see it's Francisco, or the Golden Gate Bridge. You have this relationship between the Baltimore Francis Scott Key Bridge and the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. Which then is tied into the White Lion scene from Leave the World Behind, which featured the Friends sitcom in its plot which starred Matthew Perry and which premiered just a few days before his death and Julia Roberts who starred in Leave the World Behind and was also in an episode of Friends and dated Matthew Perry was born on the same day October 28th and then there's the fact that at Matthew Perry's funeral, they played a song that has a music video showing a total solar eclipse, which then tied this all into the Great American Eclipse ritual. As that related to the eclipse in August of 2017, and then the second one in April of 2024. And the ritual destruction of the United States of America. Which then was amplified symbolically by the star-spangled splash of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore crashing into the water or being destroyed. The star-spangled banner was eliminated, symbolically. And it has this obvious tie-in to the Singapore Mer Lion or Sea Lion, which is a literal statue of a white sea lion. And then the ship is the White Lion, a great big cargo ship that crashes onto the beach and leaves the world behind, and this Dolly cargo ship is what crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. All of that in the context of 17 Again, Matthew Perry's movie, where he falls over a bridge into a whirlpool portal, <laughs> okay, and his consciousness is transferred to another time. It's transmuted into something else. It's quantum leaped from his present day body into his body in the past. Evoking this idea of sending consciousness somewhere as it relates to the larger ritual that this is all a part of and tied into. All of that is going on and you have this suicide attempt on 925, which is the radio station that the scene shows you at 10.28 p.m. <laughs> and he says that he survived in part uh, through a sea lion that kept him afloat. 
Oh, and Kevin Hines hashtag is be here tomorrow, which similarly evokes the idea of time travel. Be here, but tomorrow you're in two places at once simultaneously. You're jumping from one point to the next all at the same time. Be here tomorrow. Back to the future. Bill Gates just so happened to be born on October 28th, 1955. This is the same day that Matthew Perry died and the same day that Julia Roberts was born. And it's the same day that Irving Foster Moreau, the architect who designed the Golden Gate Bridge, died, which was October 28th, 1952. So as we tie in the Golden Gate Bridge to the Great American Eclipse ritual, we can see another reason why Matthew Perry was made a part of it, because he died on October 28th, and then Julia Roberts was also born on October 28th, and she was in the movie that encoded a lot of this stuff. And the episode of Friends that she was in was called The One After the Super Bowl Part Two which had this relationship to the actual Super Bowl that that episode aired after, which featured the Cowboys and the Steelers. And the Steelers had all of that imagery associated with what Christopher Nolan depicted in The Dark Knight Rises because that was filmed at Heinz Field where the Steelers play and even featured some of their players at the time. And Kevin Bacon's character in Leave the World Behind is wearing a Dallas Cowboys hat. And the eclipse that this all centered around was the one after the Super Bowl, the April 8, 2024 eclipse. So it just so happens that Kyrie Irving and Frederick Jason Kidd of the Dallas Mavericks will be in the 2024 NBA Finals, which starts a couple days from now on 6-6-24, or June 6th. Francis Scott Key was born in Frederick, Maryland. So you have this tie-in to Kyrie Irving and the architect who constructed the Golden Gate Bridge, Irving Foster Murrow, and Jason Kidd, whose first name is Frederick, which is the county in Maryland where Francis Scott Key was born, and I think where he has his burial plot. Additionally, Frederick Jason Kidd was born in San Francisco on March 23rd, 1973, the same day the Francis Scott Key Bridge opened in Baltimore, if you can believe that. And Kyrie Irving was born on the same day in 1992, March 23rd. He and Kidd share a birthday. So Jason Kidd was born on the literal same day that the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore opened, and then Kyrie Irving was born years later on that day, March 23rd. But those two share the same birthday, and Kyrie Irving has a part of the name of Irving Foster Morrow, who was the architect that designed the Golden Gate Bridge. So you have this tie-in to the Francis Scott Key Bridge with Francisco in the name, and these two NBA players. Well, Jason Kidd is a coach now, but he used to be a player. Incidentally, going back to the Ryan Garcia stuff at the beginning, Kyrie Irving is also known for promoting the fabricated flat earth resurgence PSYOP. In the context of Bill Gates and possible Golden Gate Bridge metaphors, right, Bill Gates, Windows, Portals, his name is evoking all of that subconsciously, which is probably a part of why he is so front and center as one of the main villains in this whole story. He's a lightning rod for criticism, and he absorbs energy in that way, so it deflects from everyone else, in the same way that Klaus Schwab does it with the World Economic Forum. But the screen and its influence potentially represents a quote-unquote flat earth, or a new reality, the online multiverse. And that could be another reason why Flat Earth was so obviously promoted in the way that it was, getting people subconsciously attuned to the idea that the new reality, the actual real reality that we live in, is a flat Earth. You see, it's the flat Earth inside the screen. That's the new, real, true reality. They're lying to you about the shape of the Earth. It's flat. 
You see what they're doing there? It's clever wordplay that uh, gets you focused on an idea without knowing it. The quantum leap of consciousness through a new Golden Gate window portal or an alchemical transformation led to gold, which again relates back to the two towers and the wire that they attached to the clock tower in the DeLorean, which was struck by lightning to send it into the future or transfer it somewhere else. This being a metaphor for consciousness and what that trilogy was doing as a mind control program beamed into the collective subconscious when everyone watched those films. Zemeckis shows you the towers turning from lead to gold at the end of the walk, symbolizing the completion of the alchemical ritual, which has all kinds of other different parts uh, as it related to contact, which he was also involved in, the sphere that drops through the device that sends consciousness somewhere else. Also, the series Manifest, he was the executive producer on, and that involves a plane with... 191 passengers, 9-11, that disappear. Flight 882, the 88 is in there, or I think it's 828. And it involves a plot where the passengers fly into a portal via the plane, and they come back five years later from the perspective of everyone that they left. But to them, it's only been a few hours getting at the idea of time travel and time dilation and what this ritual is designed to do to us. We're out of time, as it were, right? It's the end of the world. So I'll get into this a little bit as I go here, but I wanted to touch on it real quick as it relates to literal interpretations of this stuff and metaphorical interpretations of this stuff. Like the Twin Towers and 9-11, there is a ton of examples in movies and television where the Golden Gate Bridge is destroyed. So it's entirely possible that this is similar priming that will involve a future ritual and the destruction of the Golden Gate Bridge. However, we are in a different time now where everyone has a recorder in their hands that will make something like the event of 9-11 much more difficult to pull off in the real world. So we have to entertain the possibility that going forward, a lot of this is more metaphorical than literal. In which case, the Golden Gate Bridge is symbolizing something else. Like I was just going into, the alchemical transformation led to gold. It's the Golden Gate, the culmination of the alchemical transformation. Right, 88 days that it takes Mercury to go around the sun, which symbolizes the 88, the alchemical Mercury that's involved in all of this. And in that respect, all of this Golden Gate Bridge programming and embedded subliminal resonance could be attempting to evoke a metaphor for a bridge from one place to another along those alchemical transformation lines or the quantum leap lines, however you want to view it. Where it's the golden gate between the two points or the stargate would be another way to put it. The portal. Which in the context of their Subconscious programming is a metaphor for what it does to our eyes and how it influences us to go in certain directions and believe certain things that serve their agenda and what they want to see transpire. In that way, it sort of borrows our collective imagination and our ability to visualize the future and uses it for itself so that we don't use it for our own visualizations that might go in different directions. Only time will tell which one it really is, but I just wanted to make a point about the possible metaphor involved here, and I'll get to how that relates to Donald Trump as well, and nuclear programming that's all over this stuff too. But just wanted to make that point real quick before going forward to the memorial statue of Francis Scott Key, 
which stood in Golden Gate Park, San Francisco from 1888 until 2020. It was unveiled on July 4th, 1888 and destroyed during the George Floyd protests on June 19th, 2020. Interestingly, Donald Trump, fresh off becoming the first former president to ever be convicted of a crime, which ties right back into the ritual destruction of the USA or the Great American Eclipse, that's very symbolic, will be in San Francisco for a fundraising event on 6624. Remember, that's the same day as the first NBA Finals game between the Mavericks with Jason Kidd and Kyrie Irving and the Boston Celtics. Uh, and Boston, of course, has all of this affiliation with the Declaration of Independence and the American Revolution, the Tea Party, 1776. Surely not an accident that that team is who Jason Kidd and Kyrie Irving are playing in the NBA Finals this year. Matthew Perry's co-star in 17 again, Leslie Mann, was born on March 26, 1972, the same day that the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed in Baltimore. So again, we are just way outside the realm of coincidence here. I mean, not only was Jason Kidd born on the actual day that the Francis Scott Key Bridge opened, but then Matthew Perry's co-star, Leslie Mann, was born on the day that the bridge then collapsed and was destroyed in Baltimore. Remembering that 17 again has that pivotal scene on the bridge with the suicide attempt tying back into the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco, and the sea lion leave the world behind, Matthew Perry and friends, and October 28th, 1028 on the clock, with the radio station tuned to 925, which was the day when the guy tried to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge and kill himself. <laughs> okay? This stuff is just unbelievable. And then on top of all that, Jason Kidd, born in San Francisco on that day. Remembering that all this Francis Scott Key stuff has the Francisco in it. And that's what I kind of mean about the metaphorical aspect to this where, yes, this could be pointing towards the eventual destruction of the Golden Gate Bridge, and I would not be surprised if that happened in some kind of ritual in the future, but also the destruction of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore or the Star Spangled Banner Bridge is metaphorically a part of the ritual that is sending us through the Golden Gate, sending us from one point of the Golden Gate Bridge to the other. It's the metaphorical portal. And that takes on even more weight when you consider that Silicon Valley is in San Francisco. And so much of the evolution that's referred to in all of this propaganda surrounds artificial intelligence and transhumanism or merging with uh, machines. So metaphorically, it's the golden gate from the point we are at now into this new evolution where humans are no longer human. And as a part of that, we are out of time. It's the end of the world. Time doesn't fit anymore when our minds start to be assimilated by the internet. It goes much faster than we're used to. We can't handle it. We don't understand why things are going so fast in that respect. We are out of time in a very literal way. The connection between these two bridges in Baltimore and San Francisco is even more interesting in the context of the 2013 Super Bowl between the Baltimore Ravens and the San Francisco 49ers. Go figure that they play each other in this 2013 Super Bowl, which was the same Super Bowl already covered in relationship to Christopher Nolan because the lights went out in the third quarter of that Super Bowl with the clock stopped at 1322. In The Dark Knight Rises, a terrorist attack is kicked off at a football game filmed in Heinz Field which shows a press box numbered 322 blown up and subsequently provides imagery of multiple bridges being destroyed, ultimately culminating with Batman detonating a nuclear device over the water. Christopher Nolan then connects this to the opening sequence of Tenet by showing another terrorist attack from the perspective of a press box 
overlooking a concert hall very similar to the Crocus Concert Hall, where a terrorist attack took place on 32224, four days before the Francis Scott Key Bridge was hit and collapsed. Also, in this same Leave the World Behind April 8, 2024 eclipse window, on December 25th, 2023, the San Francisco 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens played a regular season NFL game, and the final score was 19 to 33. And construction on the Golden Gate Bridge began January 5th, 1933. There you go, right? There is the connection between Baltimore, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge. 1933. Now, I covered Ghostbusters Frozen Empire when I was going over all this stuff, but I had not seen the film, which I have since had a chance to see. And before getting into it, let's just note again that this was released on the same day as the Crocus Attack 32224. In terms of the plot, though, pay close attention to how the great evil, quote-unquote, was imprisoned and eventually released from a sphere which continued the same contact theme relating to our eyes and collective subconscious that I went into in the three-body problem video. Which, of course, relates to the eyes, the three-body problem that is metaphorically represented by the earth, the sun, and the moon, as it relates to the structural anatomy of the eye. The Ghostbusters Frozen Empire plot is all about the control of fire and ice, or the sun and the moon. And it's not surprising that this was the theme, given that it was released right before the April 8, 2024 eclipse. Metaphorically, it represents the eclipse synthesis that subliminal and subconscious mind control programming achieves. The metaphorical sun being eclipsed by the moon, or your eyes being eclipsed by this propaganda, merging with it, controlling it for a brief period in time. By embedding all of the events that we see in the news with subliminal astronomical themes, they effectively control the planets and the planet's influence on us in that way. The evil is defeated at the end of the movie, but you have to understand that metaphorically, they are the Ghostbusters. The viewer subconsciously consents to the alchemical transmutation and they reinforce this with everyone cheering for their victory at the end of the movie. As the audience, you give a subconscious sigh of relief that they quote-unquote won, and society as we know it, or their system, was saved. And this is a theme that plays out in so many different television series and films, uh, where you find yourself rooting for them to succeed, and that has a subconscious influence on the real world because everything that you are seeing is embedded with subliminal subconscious programming that you are subconsciously consenting to and giving your energy towards within the context of the surface level plot where you're cheering for something to happen or rooting for it or hoping it happens. You're attaching your hope to their agenda in that way. I hope that makes sense. In any event, the fire and ice theme was mostly relating to the April 8th Great American Eclipse window that all of this took place within, and the opening scenes confirmed this by showing the X-path of the eclipses via wires hanging from two towers, evoking all of the Zemeckis stuff. Back to the Future, Contact the Wire, and uh, Manifest. And I have a picture of that. This is from one of the opening scenes of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and obviously Frozen Empire is referring to the United States of America. It's a frozen empire. And you see the 2017 path of the first eclipse, and then the 2024 path of the second eclipse, and the X that it made over southern Illinois, and you can see how this is exactly how they show the path of totality on the eclipse maps. And it's connected to the two towers, the twin 9-11 that is Donald Trump, the moon child, and the ritual destruction of America, the great American eclipse. Plutonium, which nuclear bombs use for detonation, is named after the former planet Pluto. Plutonium featured heavily in Back to the Future, where it is needed for the DeLorean to travel through time. 
The 9-11 twin, Donald Trump, the moon child, Eclipse Baby, gravitationally pulls on the tides of the great American eclipse. And Michael Moore has this promotional photo for Fahrenheit 11.9 showing a nuclear explosion mushroom cloud over the White House as he swings a golf club. Which again brings up the 4-8 New Jersey earthquake, Bedminster DeLorean Golf Club, lightning strikes the Statue of Liberty, Back to the Future, Plutonium, the whole thing. You have this nuclear resonance to Donald Trump. And the twin of 9-11, or 11-9. It's a nuclear event. And coincidentally... Pluto has an orbital period of 90,560 days. On June 14th, 2024, Pluto will be in the same position that it was on the day the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776. June 14th, 1946, of course, is Donald Trump's birthday. According to conventional wisdom, Pluto is associated with changes that are so sudden or dramatic, they feel like they're destructive. In this way, Pluto is associated with destruction. And you could see how the Declaration of Independence would be viewed as a change that could be characterized as destruction, right? From the perspective of the British Empire, it was a destructive event. And now, all of these years later, we have this massive coincidence that Donald Trump's birthday in the year 2024 we'll see Pluto in the exact same position that it was on July 4th, 1776, which is just mind-boggling given what they have encoded into Donald Trump as the destroyer of America, the great American eclipse, the moon child, the talisman that gravitationally pulls everything into it and transforms America into something else. What are the odds that on Donald Trump's birthday, Pluto is returning to the same spot it was in on July 4th, 1776, when America was created, just a few days after his destructive presidency and MAGA movement culminated in him becoming the first ever president convicted of a felony, right? You have this massive coincidence that sort of the culmination of everything that they embedded into Donald Trump came with that verdict in his hush money uh, trial relating to Stormy Daniels and the storm that is coming where now officially he is known as this convict and everything that he has been associated with and everything they've said about him is confirmed in the minds of those who think that all of this is real and not some script playing out that they coordinated in advance. They extract all of that energy in both directions the people who think he's a criminal say, yes, see, we told you. And then the other side thinks, oh, see, Donald Trump's right. We're under attack. The United States is dying. It's a kangaroo court. We have to save America. In other words, he is the symbolic and metaphorical nuclear bomb detonated in the United States of America. He is the symbolic nuclear reaction or the currency exchange that generates the electricity, which in this case would be the energy needed to steer the collective mind in a new paradigm. In Back to the Future, in reference to the DeLorean, there is this exchange between Marty and Doc Brown where Marty says, are you saying this sucker is nuclear? And Doc Brown replies, no, this sucker is electrical, but I need a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity I need. In other words, Donald Trump is the plutonian nuclear reaction that generates the electricity. He's the plutonian nuclear reaction that generates the currency exchange. Viewing collective human energy as electricity in a grid that can be steered and manipulated and moved in different directions. It can be stored up in different places and accessed at various different points in time and unleashed at different points in time to serve various agendas. 
And in this way, metaphorically, Donald Trump, as the twin of 9-11, as that tower falling, which they showed you in the currency exchange scene, <laughs> he is the nuclear bomb that explodes in America. And that's exactly what he did. He has destroyed America. They got just as much out of Donald Trump's narrative that they would have if they actually detonated a nuclear bomb in the United States of America. Now, to my point earlier about the difference between literal and subconscious metaphorical programming, sure, they might still have it in the cards somewhere to detonate a nuclear bomb. I don't know, maybe. They've certainly shown that in enough movies and television shows as well, similar to the Golden Gate Bridge being destroyed. But let's see the other side of this too, where if you view all of the things that have been attributed to Donald Trump from this perspective, collectively, it is a nuclear bomb that has been detonated in the United States of America. Which would explain why so much of this propaganda, especially as it related to the Great American Eclipse, had nuclear resonance, particularly through Christopher Nolan. And Oppenheimer and the role that Oppenheimer played in the 2023 news cycles which then bled into his brother doing fallout and there's way more examples than that of the nuclear programming that's been embedded into all this stuff but just viewing it metaphorically that's what donald trump is and continues to be and along those lines we probably haven't seen the grand finale as it were right we haven't seen the mushroom cloud, metaphorically speaking, in the air. We've seen the explosion, but it hasn't reached its pinnacle yet. And that's still being scripted behind the scenes and playing out uh, as we go here. And a lot of that will hinge on what they decide to do with the election. They could take it either direction. No matter what they do, they can sell the reaction, like I was saying, as it relates to the energy extraction and manipulation. If Trump somehow is said to be the winner, they'll just go with the rise in Christian nationalism plot where he becomes a sort of new Hitler character. And it'll be much later down the line that the response to him will result in all of the things that I was talking about in the prior video. Or it's going to be a more immediate thing where they tell us that Biden won the election. Everyone knows he didn't actually win the election. America is officially a banana republic that doesn't count votes. It's out in the open now. And the reaction to that election being stolen a second time from the perspective of Donald Trump supporters leads to a type of event attributed to his supporters like J6 was, which then has the same effect. Oh, speaking of which, I wanted to get into a couple headlines about that. This is from Reuters. Trump blasts his trial judges then his fans call for violence. And I just thought it was so hilarious how Reuters has these red quote boxes coming down as they put this headline for you to read, which is evoking the idea of blood and Trump and violence all at the same time that you're taking in this headline. Just wanted to point that out, an obvious uh, subliminal effect taking place here. And then this is right after the verdict. Trump supporters call for riots and violent retribution. Again, priming people for what they will eventually see when things don't go Trump's way. Oh, and then this was Nicki Minaj. If you remember from the Paris video, she played a big role in the Ice Spice Princess Diana music video that was very clearly depicting 2001 A Space Odyssey. And then... Nicki Minaj gets arrested overseas in Europe, which got her into the news cycle. Everyone was kind of paying attention to Nicki Minaj briefly because she got arrested. Or at least if you pay attention to the news, you saw that. And then just a couple days later, Nicki Minaj holds moment of silence for dear friend Princess Diana in Birmingham. And most people would just think that's weird, which is what this article is about, because she didn't even know her. <laughs> but if you 
go back and listen to that Paris video, you know that Nicki Minaj turns 42 this year and she was involved, like I said, in all that Princess Diana stuff with Ice Spice. And that's why this headline is out in the news right before the Paris Olympics uh, kick off in July. Oh, and then this is uh, the blades falling off the Moulin Rouge windmill in Paris in late April 2024. And what was really interesting to me was the pictures of the windmills on the ground, which when I saw the first time, I thought, hmm, you know what that's kind of making me think of? It's making me think of the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> and hopefully you can see what I was getting at there where you see these on the ground and subconsciously you just kind of think of the big supports of the Golden Gate Bridge on the ground. Destroyed. And the fact that this happened in Paris as it relates to that ritual and how that tied into everything else it would make sense to throw this in there as sort of a hat tip to the either literal coming destruction of the Golden Gate Bridge in some type of ritual or the metaphorical Golden Gate Bridge as it relates to the fusion of human beings with technology and the eventual fusion of consciousness itself then with technology, which would be the true alchemical golden gate transformation or transmutation. And then right around the same time, just a few days before that windmill fell, you have the headlines, readers defend right of Golden Gate Bridge and I-880 demonstrators to protest war in Gaza. Clearly you have the intentional association between 88 and the Golden Gate Bridge being intentionally driven into people's minds as the 88 relates to everything that I've gone into with the great American eclipse. And now the golden gate bridge, as it plays into the same ritual, either literally or metaphorically, we'll see. So I'm pretty sure that's all I had. I already went over this last paragraph here, getting into the difference between literal and subconscious so I won't read all of that again. I just wanted to tie up the loose end with the nuclear programming as it relates to Donald Trump and the Great American Eclipse. He is a metaphorical nuclear bomb that has detonated in the United States of America. Uh, but that's it for now. Later.